In this video, we're going to look at getting started with aero bars or tri bars, as some people call them. So if you're an age group triathlete or maybe you've just started time trialing and you're thinking, ah, oh, fancy some free speed, maybe I should put some aero bars on my bike. Or maybe you're a little nervous and you're thinking, ooh, having my hands that far away from my brake sounds pretty scary, then this video will be great because we'll start off by looking at the pros and cons of having some aero bars. Then I'll go through to show you how to get some clip-on bars onto your road bike. And finally, we'll go out and look at some of the techniques of how to get used to riding with aero bars, getting comfortable with them, and how to start off so that you can go and do your first ride with your aero bars. So let's jump in and get started. So the first question to ask is, do we actually need aero bars? And let's start with a few cons. I mean, they're, they're kind of scary, right? Like you've got less control, you've got no brakes on the end of them. It's different to riding where you've got more control on your hoods or your drops, you're feeling it's a lot more comfortable. And they also, if you're using the clip-ons, they take a lot of handlebar space, which means you have to take some other stuff on, and I'll show you that when we get to the video. And then there's also the question of comfort. Can you ride in the aero position for hours? But I have put a question mark over that because I actually found it more comfortable once I got into the aero position than I did if I was racing hard on my drops. But let's look at the pros. So in 2018, I did Alaphorpe Classic Triathlon. And my bike segment came in at 1 hour 20 and 35 seconds. I did the same thing in 2019, just six days after I put my aero bars on. So not a massive period. I hadn't really got used to it or really practiced training on them. This was like my first ride on them. I'd done a couple of minutes down the road. And then, then I went and raced on them and I came in in 1 hour, 9 minutes and 7 seconds, which is 11 and a half minutes faster, which is a massive difference, right? But you could say, well, in that year's difference, I, got, I was on a different bike. It's probably a faster bike. I could have got fitter. So perhaps a better comparison is to look at Alaphorpe Sprint versus Alaphorpe Classic because I rode these within about a month of each other. And by this point, I had a power meter, so I could track what power I was doing. And in Alaphop Sprint, where I was just riding on my hoods, I averaged 217 watts, and I managed a speed of 31.5 kilometers per hour. Then went to Alaphorpe Classic. It's twice the distance, because it's a standard distance, not a sprint distance. And so my average power was only 197 watts. But because I was on the aero bars, I actually managed 32.9 kilometers per hour so that's a result of i put in 10 percent less power on average but still went five percent faster so even though i'd only put them on six days ago and it was my first ride and i hadn't really practiced getting aero just having them on and using them amateurishly got me a massive improvement in my previous year's time, got me a faster speed than I rode just a month ago, despite the fact I was outputting less power. So if you're sold on the idea, let's go and look at how to stick them on a bike. So if you're sold on the idea of some aero bars and how to get started, well, you probably don't want to run out and buy a TT bike because they're super expensive and you might hate it. So instead, you can get some clip-on aero bars like the ones I've got here. You can get them online for about £30 and a lot of local bike shops do them now as well, about the same price. And they will just clamp onto your handlebars. You probably need to clear everything off your handlebars to get them on. So my front light is no longer here. Also my GoPro mount is no longer here and I can't use my phone mount anymore either because I had to make space, but it was well worth it and they just clamp on. So if we come down here, we can see there are just two bolts in the rear and it's just a, a two piece where you just screw them in there and they clip on nicely. If you have got a torque wrench, 
that's super useful because these these they recommend eight to ten i've done these to six and i've got a tiny bit of slippage but of course when you get up to that kind of force it's a bit scary so if you invest an extra 30 pounds in buying a torque wrench then you've got the peace of mind that you're not going to destroy your bike by doing anything up too tightly and you can get them nice and in position the other thing that you might be able to see here is that i have wrapped a little bit of electrical tape around my handlebars before screwing them on that's because it's metal to metal and so just to protect the handlebars a bit i've wrapped it in electrical tape first and that just acts as a bit of a barrier between the two and there's quite a lot of ways you can adjust them so first of all you can have them as narrow or as wide as you want by just clamping them on to the handlebars at a different spot then you can also also angle them up and down with the same method then these bolts here allow you to move them forward you can see they've got different numbers here so if you want to have a bit more reach out here or maybe you want to pull them back a bit and get the, the slightly elevated bit back here then you just untighten these bolts pull them back or forward and then re-tighten and you can also these little pads for your elbows underneath here these the big pads are just velcroed on and there's a bolt down here and you can just tighten and untighten that to give these more swivel power probably once you've got your position in you want to lock them in because you don't want them swiveling in the middle of the race it's annoying every time you go back down onto the drops having to get it back in position now the best way to dial your position in is if you've got a turbo trainer like i've got here then you can just jump on it and you can refine your position as you go in terms of what position you want them you probably i've got mine fairly flat if we go to a side view and that's really the position that you want to start with them in sometimes you see pro athletes in the kind of praying mantis position where they've got them up here and they're tucked in and it makes them slightly more aero but also reduces the amount of control they've got over the bike and certainly when we're getting started we want to have as much control as possible so get them nice and long and flat and then when you get both hands on then you'll get as much control as you can from a pair of aero bars so that's how you can get them on your bike now let's go out and see them in action there's a couple of things you can do to make getting started on your aero bars a bit easier so one option is just to keep one hand on your hoods and put the other one on the bar and then if you're feeling brave you can lift that hand off your hood some people have had success with this i'm not a huge fan of this option because actually having one hand on the aero bar and lifting the other off is more difficult than when you've got both hands on the aero bar because at least then you've got two points of control and it's a lot easier so you're actually making it more difficult than it would be in uh, when you really start using them the other thing that i do like though is if you can find a hill not a steep hill just a couple of percent going up and go up the hill because a lot of people find it quite intimidating going fast when they start on the aero bars but speeding up gives you more control but it's not just the speed it's the power you're putting through the bike and so the advantage of going up a hill of say two three percent is that you can put quite a lot of power through the bike to give you control but you're not actually going that fast so it doesn't feel as intimidating the other things you can do is just spend some time moving from the aero bars back down to your hoods and just keep going and going up to the aero bars and down to the hoods and just practice that motion so that becomes really natural i think another aspect to riding on aero bars is you just need to accept that you're going to have a bit less control so when you're on your hoods you can instantly and easily dodge past a pothole with minimal correction when you're on the bars you need to lean the bike a bit more and take a bit of a wide berth and that's okay you just have to let that happen ultimately though it's a bit like when you first ride a bike like it's really hard and you don't know how and then suddenly you can and it feels good and that was certainly my experience that it just got comfortable pretty quickly so i hope this video has inspired you to get some aero bars and go out and smash your pbs if so, then please hit subscribe to make sure you get all of my latest videos.